Life streams, what are they? Why should you use them? So when I talk about the four levels of live streaming, we always talk about level one being the phone. Uh, level two is browser-based software where you just go live, it's cloud, it's cloud-based. You just go live on the browser and it's super simple. Maybe not the best quality, but simple and easy to use. Level three is going live from a downloadable software like Ecamm on the Mac, like I use, or vMix on the PC. And then level four is adding all of the extra fun devices to help you actually get more from your production, make it easier and smoother. Um, and also the strategy, knowing how to grow your audience, knowing how to uh, create the right kind of content that is going to grow your business. So those are the four levels of live streaming. But here's the kicker. When you actually get a high quality professional setup, um, oftentimes you forget about this little device right here. This level one device. You're like, I have a studio. I don't need this thing. Well, guess what? You're wrong. <laughs> How does it feel to be wrong? First thing in 2021. <laughs> um, and the reason that I say that is because of what I call life streams, not live streams, but life streams, where you do get on your phone and you connect with your audience on a more raw, personal level. You bring them along for the journey of your life. Let's say you're moving. Um, let's say you just got a new puppy. Let's say you have a random thought that you would like to share with your audience pull out the phone, go live, and just connect on a human level. It doesn't have to be part of your normal daily or weekly content that you deliver of value. Value comes in many different forms, and one of those forms is connection. So you could educate, you can inspire, you can entertain, you can connect. So that is what life streams are all about. Uh, I went live recently while I was puppy sitting a neighbor's dog and I had a thought around like how people manage being a parent. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I can't, I, I can't deal. Like <laughs> I have like this hyper puppy and I have Abby who's 11 years old. They don't get along. They both want my attention. Um, and I was like, oh my God, parents, like more power to you, right? It had nothing to do with live video or being yourself on camera like I always talk about, right? But it did connect me with the audience. It, it allowed me to learn from other people, get tips on, you know, how to, they got to share their tips on how to manage, you know, multiple kids, in my case, puppies, uh, pupsters, great content, totally. Everybody loves kids puppies and cats. If you've got any of those, you should be using them with your life streams. Um, but this, the reason that you want to do this is because it does connect you on a deeper level. So here's the deal. You're using live video to grow your audience and to grow your business. And you eventually want people to, who buy from you, right? Um, Eventually, you want to grow an audience of people who love you. Um, but, you know, one of those ways to grow your audience or to grow your revenue, to grow your business aspect of it, is to have a loyal audience base. And you turn people, viewers, into loyal viewers and customers down the road by being human. Like, that's really the gut of it. We, we want to provide value. We want to educate. We want to help people. But at the end of the day, you really have to connect and build a relationship and build that trust so that people want to buy from you as, as you get to that point in your journey, right? So that is what this is all about. It's really, I was on Clubhouse the other day yesterday, driving home from the Airbnb. And we were having, I, I joined this room um, with Amanda Bond and uh, Coach Glitter, Tiffany Bymaster, and um, we started talking about ads uh, and how, you know, ads are really all like Facebook ads and any kind of ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads. What's working in the ad space is something that doesn't look like ads. <laughs> You know, like, because people want to connect with other human beings. Whoa, go figure. Especially after the 
chaos of 2020, we realized and we rediscovered how important human connection is. And so I want you to tap into that in 2021. And I will be 100% uh, honest and transparent with you. I totally have taken a way step back on live streams over the last couple of years. As I um, started focusing on YouTube more than Facebook, which was a switch for us. Um, what happened was YouTube, unless you're doing like stories or something, I didn't feel like YouTube was really the right place for live streams. Um, but I could use my Instagram account. I can use my Facebook account. I can, uh, you know, uh, do, yeah, well, those would be the two platforms for me, but you could do, you know, anything, right? <laughs> I know, right, Christopher? Hey, where have you been? Yeah, an, an ad that doesn't look like an ad. <laughs> what an amazing concept. Yeah, because we want human connection. So, um, yeah, so I have taken a step back from live streams. So this is as much advice back to myself, because this is my concept um, that I that I have used over the years, over 50, 15 years of doing content online. It's so, so, so important. So I'm reminding myself in 2021 to step into and dive into life streams more often. And I want to encourage you to do this along with me. Who is going to commit to doing more life streams in 2021? Give me a big me in the comments. It's so important to add to your content strategy. You don't want to just do live shows. You want to dig into that. Now, let's talk about, because this is a concept that I've had for years, but now that we have stories and we have YouTube shorts, those are also good ways to adapt or um, adjust this concept of going live from your phone right? And you could do shorts, you could do uh, stories, you could do, you could take advantage of these different um, platform offerings to play around with this concept. And so feel free to do so. If you don't feel like going live for 30 minutes, do a short or a story, right? And just connect, just bring people along for your journey of your life. Um, so if who has... Um, who has a good example of maybe a life stream or something that you did with a story or a short to bring people behind the scenes of your life and let them in on who you are as a human being or how your family runs or any of that kind of thing. Um, personal interests. So if you have an example that you've used um, or that you've done, I would love for you to type it in the comments so that I can share with everybody. Nathaniel, if you're late, you're yes, supposed to bring cookies for the whole class. We've got 332 people that need uh, that need cookies. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you brought enough. But a live stream, just to recap, is a phone stream. It's raw. It doesn't matter if you have a professional setup like I do. You still want to jump onto your phone and connect in a more human way level. Create that relationship. Let them behind the scenes of your lifestyle. Um, so if you're going to an art fair, well, okay, that's an old example. We don't do that anymore, do we? Um, <laughs> if you're bored at home. <laughs> Oh my God, all of the examples that I used to use are like no longer able to be used. That's so funny. Um, 363 now, come on guys. We've got a lot of cookies to, to deliver, to, to put out there. Uh, welcome to all of the viewers watching. Uh, if you are new, please do type new in the comments. My name is Luria Petrucci and I'm from Live Streaming Pros where we help you create professional live video that is uniquely you. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to not be blank. So, um, yes, I was in Michael Hyatt's class last week and totally should have done a live stream. Yes, going through a conference. Um, I'll, I'll, on Thursday, I'll be doing a uh, an intensive uh, with uh, Michael Hyatt's uh, group, uh, Business uh, Accelerator. And, you know, I can go live and I can share a tidbit of information that I learned. Or, you know, what if... What, you know, what am I thinking right now? Is there something that's really just like I'm cleaning the dishes and I have a thought that would be really valuable or interesting for my audience? 
Share that stuff. That is how you create loyal audience members. It's how you create that relationship with your audience so that they do want to show up so that they want to engage. Engagement in live video is one of the hardest things for people to get more of. So if you do a short or a story or a live stream, then what's going to happen is those people are going to connect with you as a human being. Then when you put, they pop into your live show or watch a video, they're going to be more likely to engage because they feel connected to you. They know you as a human being. So that's why you see me bring Abby on the show constantly, right? I have an Abby cam. It's not working today, but, um, you know, we have a, the Abby cam that we often put like on screen. There's so much potential here for really being human. And this is what's so important. And I have committed to being more in Instagram this, this, uh, this year and being more in DMS, Instagram DMS, please not messenger DMS. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I, I have had a tendency over the last couple of years to pull back from personal messages because of my overwhelm of time. And I am really realizing that that was probably, it's not, it wasn't a mistake because it was what I needed to do. But this year in 2021, I'm diving deeper into those personal connections outside of my live show because it's so so important. Um, okay. <laughs> what was that? What was that coffee? Cause you're on fire. I need to buy some of that. It was coffee that made my stomach upset, but now I'm just like, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. I just want to see if there are anybody, uh, we, we've got uh, some new people, Diz Versal Adventures. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Floyd, with an example, making waffles for my daughter is a top interaction post. Yes, 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 yes. That's a perfect life stream, right? Uh, cable management. Oh, and that was a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to bring that up as an example of, um, of this live stream. So on Friday, you, oh yeah, we didn't even take a day off because I went live to do cable management with you from the phone. And it was so raw, so just laid back. It wasn't even from this camera. It was from the phone. I was behind my desk. We were cable managing together. And I, I forgot to unlist that one, which would be a normal action for me. And I looked this morning and it has more views than it should. <laughs> Why? It has more views than other videos that I've done. Why? Because it was human. The thumbnail actually, and I may be talking to the team about leaning into this a little bit more, but like the thumbnail was a phone picture. I was just like, ah, I'm from, I'm in front of cables. That is something to pay attention to. Um, test this stuff out. Lean into that human connection in 2021. We have really, really realized um, how important it is to uh, do that. Oh, you missed cable management. Sarah, where were you? <laughs> it has more views because I taped it. Because you taped it? What did you tape? What? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Patricia says, I'm convinced. After your show, I'm going to head outside and show my audience my horrible deck and backyard and talk about this year's plans for tidying them up. Yes. Get people involved. Ask them what they think you should do. Um, hey, guys, if you've ever done, um, if you've ever, you know, refinished a deck, what brand did you, did you use? Did you like it? Did you not ask people for their involvement with that kind of stuff? That is a perfect example, Patricia. And I cannot wait for you to actually ask or like share with me how that worked out for you. Uh, the artist Haven during our art live streams, we talk about life and things going on in the world. It's really helped us connect with people and for people to connect with people in the chat. It's a beautiful thing. It really truly is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And what you can do in your normal content is really what you're going to be doing is creating audience. Cliffhanger, cliffhanger there. <laughs> Sorry. What you're going to be doing is creating 
um, audience triggers. So what happens in your live streams on your personal life, um, people are going to bring into the chat room on your live shows, and then they are going to be more um, engaged. They're going to talk about those things. They Things will come up. Um, Abby is an audience trigger uh, because everybody knows Abby. She gets talked about constantly, even when she's not on screen. Um, you know, those things between your personal personal life and your business content um, are going to start to mesh and mold together, meld together, you know what I mean. Um, and then that's going to create just amazing content. It's not dry, it's full of personality. And when I talk about being uniquely you, that is what I'm talking about, making sure that your personality is out there. And the best way to start that process is by starting it with through live, live streams, and then you'll slowly be able to integrate that. Okay, Nathaniel got it. Love the concept. What works best with live streams? How can I connect with my audience in a live stream? I've been giving examples, um, so it doesn't really matter. If you have a thought of the day, like I said, washing dishes or you're uh, on a walk and you're like, you know what? I was thinking about my audience and I was thinking about uh, something that, that, that popped up for me or maybe a struggle that you're dealing with personally, sharing that with your audience and again, getting them involved, getting them to connect with you and, and answer you. Um, you know, one, uh, one person I know, somebody who I admire and love, um, Jill Stanton from the, from screw the nine to five. One time she did a life stream and she talked, um, about how she deals with anxiety and, um, it wasn't something that you would have ever known from her. It wasn't something that, that you would have guessed, but how many people in this world deal with anxiety? So many people. Woohoo! Oh, and we got double super chat alerts. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Really, really appreciate you. Um, I'm going to answer your question here in just a second. I'm just going to finish my thought. Um, so when she went live and she did a live stream, she was out um, walking or on a hike and she went live from her phone. She just talked openly about that struggle and how she has overcome things or the, the, how it's affected her business. And that opened up so much more raw and vulnerable conversations for her audience where they felt connected to her because they deal with the same thing. And so then they also were able to give tips or suggestions on overcoming that themselves. So when you create an environment that is open to discussion, to sharing of ideas and knowledge, that is powerful. That will produce better and bigger results for your business in 2021, no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, so much good stuff. Okay. Your question, uh, was reasons for streaming in 60 frames per second. Thanks again for all your helpful videos. RJ, you are very welcome. So 60 frames per second. Um, it's a personal preference. Really? I am streaming in 60 frames per second. Uh, oftentimes, um, we see that, uh, people tend to react much differently to 60 frames per second because of how your eyes pay attention to it. Um, and so 60 frames per second, total personal preference. Uh, Doc Rock was in our streamer accelerator group yesterday and correct me team if I'm wrong, but I believe he said that he uses 24 frames per second to create that cinematic look. So it's about the look that you want to create. So you test it, play with it, see what you like, see what your audience likes. There's no real, you know, there's no one right answer for anybody. Yeah. I, I love 60 frames per second. Personally, I think it looks fantastic for sure. Okay. Yeah. So he said 20, he, he's doing 24 frames per second. So you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. We've got lots of questions. Do you always unlist them? If so, how long do you leave them up to prior to doing so? Carl, um, I actually need to do a full video about my strategy here. I actually don't unlist all my live streams. Some people do. Um, I leave ones that are specifically meant for 
growing an audience. So um, like this training, right? So we're going to cut down the training to a condensed version. And then the Q&A comes out of it. The countdown timer comes out of it. And that is meant to be a condensed video after a live stream. And then people will search for it and people will find me and hopefully we will grow the subscriber base, right? So if I'm intentional about that content, then we structure it for, for that purpose. And so if it's like a, if it's totally like a crazy random stream, like, like the cable management video, typically I probably would have unlisted that now that it's doing so well, I'm not, <laughs> right? And so sometimes I'm wrong, right? Sometimes we're all wrong about the content piece of it um, and what people are attracted to. So it's worth testing on your channel. Your channel is going to perform differently than my channel, but there are some basic rules. And the, one of those basic rules that I work off of is what is going to attract a new audience member. If somebody searches for something, winds up on one of my pre-recorded videos or my live videos, are they going to be interested in looking at my other channel? Hopefully so, right? And other videos on that channel. And then what the, what's gonna happen is they're going to um, be suggested another video. If they're going from a five minute video to an hour and a half live stream or an hour live stream, that may be a disconnect for them. So. It's, you know, it's not something that I leave up. I don't leave up all streams. Uh, it just depends on the intention of that. Uh, follow up. So you love, you live stream and then, and I also love streams, uh, but you love stream and then edit it down and post that as a video on demand. No. So I don't repost it. I'm literally just trimming that video in YouTube or Facebook. Now keep in mind, I have to say this every time I talk about this, you will lose live comments if you touch that video on YouTube. So um, if you edit that and trim it like I do on some of them, then um, you are going to lose the live chat replay. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want that, don't do it. Structure your video otherwise. Now we're talking about structures, stream, uh, show flows uh, in the content workshop that's coming up. So that's something that we'll really dive into. <laughs> uh, all the, the love stream comments I'm laughing at, <laughs> but I'm not going to put them on camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yash says, can you make a video on which background we should have for like one gaming channels versus a tech channel? Um, we do have videos on choosing a background. So I would highly recommend you watch those videos on the YouTube channel, the live streaming, the live streaming pros YouTube channel. Um, but at the core, the essence, you want it to create an environment for your audience. So for instance, this is my living room. Everybody thinks it's green screen. It is not green screen. Um, <laughs> So this is my living room. I have an 850 square foot studio. It is not necessarily um, something that I had room to create an entirely different studio space or set background. So I designed my living room to also work with as a set background. But the environment that I'm welcoming you into when you watch my streams is light and airy and you see plants back there, you see the pops of color that I love. Um, but if you are doing a gaming channel, maybe you wanna have, you know, the, the like maybe you collect something around that game and that's in your background. Create the environment that you want people to connect with you on as a human being. So a lot of times you can do that with, um, you know, personal effects. Um, do you love books? Do you love comics? Do you love games? Like doesn't matter what it is, doesn't have to actually match your content, but also you can do something like um, content specific, uh, backgrounds like my bourbon journey on YouTube, his background is all bourbon because he talks about bourbon and his, his set background is wall, a wall of different bourbons. It's fantastic. So you can take different approaches 
to it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Anar, for the super sticker. Really appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> hey, you hush. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to dust because I need to dust. <laughs> um, is a Christopher Hall asked, is a vlog a life stream? Well, it's a it's a vlog. So when I talk about live streams, I'm talking about actually going live and having a conversation with your audience. Um, like we are right now, right? We're talking to each other, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it depends on how you uh, approach the vlog. Like vlogs can be approached so many different ways. Um, uh, I'm just going to pick on Callie here. Um, but Callie's uh, vlogs that she did in December, uh, were very much on that live stream level. Like she's walking people through her day essentially. Um, and so in that sense, then yes, but you're not having that conversation where you can invite the, that audience, um, integration that I was talking about. Yash Patel says, while live streaming, if you don't get any super chat or super stickers, but people watch you live, does YouTube give money to you? Um, so that uh, if you are monetized, if your channel is monetized and you have to hit some criteria before you reach that ability, then you can make money through ad revenue um, by having ads pop up on your, uh, before your video, like a pre-roll or a post-roll, or you can have like ad pop-ups, um, the textual pop uh, ads. So yes, you can make money even without super chats, uh, but you do have to hit that monetizable, uh, criteria. Okay. Um, so do you, oh, I already answered that. Um, what lens am I using? Times Masquerade wants to know. I am using the 16 millimeter, the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 four lens. Uh, you have no blue violet background. That's awesome. I'm so tired to see live streams. I was the same background light for me. I like green screen. So Eric, um, that's something that probably came from us a lot <laughs> because, um, you know, as, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of the shows that we've done on set backgrounds, you know, David, uh, who, uh, is my co-host, uh, until January 15th, um, was, uh, loves the light background or the, the LEDs in the background. And our students use that a lot and co peer, like peers of ours have used that a lot. So we've probably perpetuated that a lot <laughs> in this industry, but, um, you know, there are different ways to approach it, right? It's, it's very much up to the environment that you want to create. So, just keep that in mind. Use what you love. Now, I don't recommend green screen for most people for the regular content. You can have total fun with green screen. And on this channel, um, we have done so many different like green screen shows uh, where we have a like a pop up of Callie hitting a pinata, right? Um, things like that. And so you can actually do a lot with green screen, but you do need to light it correctly. So if you're going to use it for your regular content, please make sure that it doesn't look fake or amateur. Um, perspective is a big thing with green screen. So you can very easily, people think that this looks like green screen. Uh, and I, I get why they do. That's why sometimes I go to the back and actually pull something out of the set, <laughs> but you can very easily make it look bad. So just pay attention to that. Get, get some uh, outside feedback on that as well. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Yeah, totally. Right. Um, Renee, oh, Renee's, oh, dude, Renee's background looks so good. Uh, yeah, he is fantastic at backgrounds. So, so fantastic. I'm trying to get my youth pastor not to use green screen for his streams. Most people should not use green screens for a regular piece of content, in my personal opinion. Renee says, thanks. I just use the Dark Knight poster colors, sometimes the Star Wars poster colors. Hey, you know what? We borrow from what we love, right? And we are creating, like, because you love those things, you're creating an environment where people who also love those things are going to connect with you. Oh, set backgrounds. Like when you're creating your set, 
when you're making adjustments to your video studio. That's a perfect time to go live for a live stream as well. Those are fantastic times to go live because then when they see the end result, they're like, whoa, I saw that being created. I, I did that often, not live streams, but I did videos about the creation of this process. So it's, um, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, Impartial Geek loves LED lights, right? Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, I know, Jim. I knew you were joking. I think part of why your set is thought to be green screen is the wide angle on a full room makes floor meet walls angle that look fake. Yeah, totally. And and that's that's something that is um, a, a just a result of this lens. Um, before, I think it looked less like a green screen when I had it. You didn't see this uh, this door. And look at that. Like it does look like when I hold my. It does look like it. <laughs> It's so funny. Um, but when I had it more at a, like an angle like this, um, it actually looked less like a green screen, but I do love seeing this door in the frame. This is like a slider barn door. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all about choosing. Okay, wait, you bought a white shower curtain but put black paint spots on it, very cheap and little effort. I would love to see what that looks like, Caleb. Uh, but yeah, you can totally get creative totally get creative, right? Um, and so you want to make sure that you you look at what other people are doing. And by the way, I do have a video or a, a free PDF um, about set backgrounds. So if you are struggling with your set background, uh, you can click the link at the top of the ban, oh wait, no, I'm banner on my channel. We're gonna post the link. Um, if we can post that link, uh, livestreamingpros.com slash ideas. That'll give you 10 set background ideas and tips from our students who have created uh, set backgrounds. Uh, they show you that it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be expensive. It's really not uh, a big deal to go cheap on the background because you can't tell. Um, when, when people try and spend too much on their background pieces, um, always tell, we always tell them like, nope, like, go cheaper. <laughs> Don't spend your money on something that looks good regardless because your camera is going to do the work for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not in a background. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in a green screen. Do I have to go pick up my sword again? Do I have to pull the sword out again, guys? <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Wrestling on Weed. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, this, yes, uh, Damani, live streaming pros, we like we have so much good stuff coming in the future. There's we've got oh, LinkedIn live streaming. We're talking about next Thursday. Um, I can't I need to look back at my calendar, but we've got a ton of of amazing content uh, for you here at Live Streaming Pros in 2021. So subscribe, hit that bell notification. Uh, I should have that like actually available, but I don't. I don't have that. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> I had to change my camera inputs, and so it's all like messed up now. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Now I have to get back to my main show. I'm messing with the the um the stream deck. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, hold please. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I just noticed there's some movement in that in the window. Is that a street? Yes. Um. So this is outside. Yes. There's a street here. You'll see cars go by uh, from time to time, and then you'll see the so. There's a tree right outside. You can't see it right now because it's there are no leaves. Um, but in the you know spring, you'll start to see leaves in there, and it'll start to be green outside outside this window. In addition to the plants that I have inside. So yeah. <laughs> We're totally off topic now, but not really. I mean, kind of, kind of. <laughs> French press, Samurai Luria. <laughs> I do 
have that. You need a bucket of tennis balls you can throw out the back wall when anyone asks. Ooh, that's a great idea, except that then it'll hit Abby <laughs> or, t or take down my, it'll probably, knowing me and my aim, it'll probably take down my samurai sword. The samurai sword would open and then it would somehow chop Abby in half. So I'm not going to do that, but that's a great idea. <laughs> Oh, geez. If for most people, they already have what they need for a good set. Plus, if you need trinkets, then thrift stores are great for those items. Yes, Christopher, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Um, LinkedIn Live is still a thing. Absolutely. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's a lot of people are using it. Um, for great for great stuff on LinkedIn. I'm not a LinkedIn user. Um, but, uh, we, we get a lot of questions about LinkedIn live. So if you are curious about it, Roger Wakefield, who is, it, Roger is amazing. Um, he is a plumber who has grown his business like crazy. His YouTube channel is gone insane in terms of growth. He's a plumber. So if you think that you can't create content and grow a channel with whatever topic you want to talk about then you need to watch that stream, even if you're not interested in LinkedIn Live, because we're going to dive into that as well. Uh, but he uses LinkedIn Live, and he has uh, done really, really, really well with it. Oh, yeah. No, messing with the stream deck never goes <laughs> goes wrong. Lisa, happy. Hey, from Minnesota. Hello. <laughs> um, let's see. What camera are you using? Love your channel. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I'm using the uh, Sony A6100 with a Sigma F, Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens. Ooh. <laughs> I need to program that. Uh, what window doesn't have a video screen behind it to help with that green screen look, right? <laughs> uh, no, don't hit Abby. No, exactly, right? We don't want that. We definitely don't want that. Hello, James. Welcome, welcome. So uh, what other questions do you guys have? Oh, where's the sword at? Okay, now that we're talking about the sword. This is a sword. Katana. I guess we call it a katana. Uh, but yeah, this is my sword in the background. It's a it's a kind of a prop, but uh <laughs> and I have to be very careful with it because sometimes I get a little it gets away from me. It has gotten away from me before. <laughs> oh geez, you guys are funny. <laughs> I kind of took that and ran with it, didn't I? <laughs> yes, um, Roger is the man. Google Plumbing and you'll find him. I know, right? Uh, stage gear. Uh, so we don't really cover like stage gear here. Although if you are a musician, we are, um, we do have some content coming up in the near future about musicians and live streaming. So I don't do, I'm not a musician, um, but we, I will be bringing people in to discuss that topic. So stick around, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Um, and that's what, that's what we're doing in 2021. Listening to you. What is it you need to hear about? Let us know. You've got to speak up. So musicians, fitness, uh, we've got more content coming uh, out about all of that. I have a meeting at 11, so I'm going to have to go soon. But, um, oh, hey, Damani. Uh, look for, like, I think I actually answered your question earlier. <laughs> but yeah, looking forward to more great content for sure. You're going to be doing more live streaming. Yes, 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 yes. I know. It's so amazing. I just, I'm super, super talented. Able to walk into a fake green screen set. It's just pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the equipment for this live streaming, if you go to, so we have a studio workshop. So if you, um, oh, this camera, the camera input, hold on. <laughs> Darn it. I'm coming back. <laughs> there we go. So this studio workshop helps you create a studio like mine. It, everything that you need to know about the cameras, the gear, what cables you need and how that connects. We have diagrams, 
we have um, kits for you. Um, if you go to livestreamingpros.com slash GLN, you'll see the basics, basic information about my live, my setup. Um, G, that's slash GLN. Uh, Kathleen just put that link in the, the comments. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, but yeah, so if you... Um, if you look at that, uh, you'll understand what all I use. I also have a series of videos coming out about my studio setup process, so look for that. But also, if you wanna learn how to create your own live streaming studio that's for video, live streaming, webinars, course videos, whatever it is you do, uh, then you can grab that right there, livestreamingpros.com slash studio. All right. Oh, thanks. The workshop is great. Glad you liked it. Oh, um, okay. Uh, we have a video on um, mics and wh where to plug those in on this channel as well. Um, oh, Glitch, looking forward to the strategy call tomorrow. I have some thoughts to bounce off people. Glitch, I hate to tell you. So in Streamer Accelerator, um, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still working on, I'm unavailable tomorrow. Um, that was something I uh, failed to look at ahead of time. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, if it's not tomorrow, if it's not tomorrow, we're going to let you know. If it's not tomorrow, then um, it'll be next week for sure. Okay. What's my pre-live show routine? Oh, um, I don't, at this point, I don't really have like a routine that helps me get ready and prepped and I mean, I do. Okay. So I turn on all of the, I turn on my, my computer and, and the gear, um, and just, I set up for that show. So if I have a more complicated show versus a simple show, I'll make sure my stream deck and, and ecam is set up for that particular show. Um, so, you know, depending on how complicated it is, uh, then I might get ready between 30 minutes and an hour to two hours. There have been some that I spend two hours prepping for. Um, but like this morning's, it's not complicated for, for tech wise. And so it was just like, turn it on and go. Um, make your outlines. Uh, I bulk prep that stuff uh, for the most part. Um, so I'm not doing it right before the show. And then... I dance. <laughs> I dance in the con countdown timer to get my energy up and pumped up and ready to go. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Michael coming in with the cookies. So thank you, Michael, for bringing cookies. Uh, what is my biggest concern when doing a live stream? Um, my biggest concern when doing a live stream. Value. I mean, I, I'm always thinking about how is it that I'm going to make sure the audience is getting what they're there for. Um, so I wouldn't call that a concern, but it is the it is the top of my mind. Um, so when you're just starting out, you have a lot of concerns. After 15 years of doing this stuff, I don't really have concerns because. It doesn't matter what happens during live. Uh, I know that I can handle it and roll with the punches. And that's something that just takes practice to, to get to. Um, so I don't really have concerns, but I do have things that I consider. Does that make sense? You cannot, JD, um, you cannot yet. <laughs> they are looking at, at that in their development cycle. So... I would suggest um, just keeping an eye on that. Uh, I do an Ecamm live show every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. So on both the Ecamm channels and this channel, we are talking, well, not always talking specifically about Ecamm, but I do keep you up to date on new features. Okay, there were some questions. <laughs> oh, uh, Haresh said, I don't use a Mac, so I can't use Ecamm Live software. Can you suggest alternate? So if you're on a PC, we recommend vMix. Um, so you can start with a level two, regardless of your PC, Mac, Linux, whatever. You can start with level two, which is a cloud-based service that you just log into the browser. You don't have to download any software. That will allow you to get started and go quickly. You need to just be moving. You need to be doing, right? So I would highly suggest 
that you start there, Restream uh, or StreamYard. We have links to both of those services, uh, livestreamingpros.com slash Restream, livestreamingpros.com slash StreamYard. Um, those are affiliate links for clear uh, visibility there. Um, but we don't recommend anything that we don't use or like or recommend for you. Like very, very, very particular about that. But both those services are great options to just get going while you set up something like vMix on your PC so that you cannot wait for perfection. People need connection more than perfection and you need to just get going and not worry so much about all of the tech. We'll get you there. Just stick with me. We'll get you there, but get going quickly. Okay. Oh yeah. Cocktail cards. Um, whoops. <laughs> I'm supposed to go in. Oh, there we go. There's my morning routine. <laughs> Before I go live, I usually go into do not disturb mode. I did not do that today because I was busy figuring out why my cameras weren't coming on. Like literally I had to unplug and plug everything back in. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm so glad that you're loving your new streaming machine. That M1 video was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, not the hugest fan of this because it is a wireless device. And anytime you go for no hardwire connection, you are potentially going to run into some issues. So um, I do know some people who have used it successfully, but more often than not on the people that I've, that I've heard from who use it, they have more problems than is worth it. I was really excited when I saw it at NAB um, before it was released, uh, but it hasn't been a fantastic options for most people. Um, okay. You are very welcome, Patrick. Thank you so much for saying that you're getting great stuff from this. You guys, I am live Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here on this channel. And like I said, we have so much good stuff coming your way. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put an alarm on your calendar. Hey Siri, <laughs> set an alarm for 9.50 a.m. Pacific. Tuesday through Friday. <laughs> Did that work? Did I set your Siri off? <laughs> That's what I want you to do right now. Um, <laughs> stop it, stop it. <laughs> Siri is trying to do it. Um, but yeah, join us because we start at 10 minutes beforehand for a countdown timer with great music. We dance, we get going, we get pumped, we get ready together to have an amazing show. I've got tons of experts and guests coming on in 2021. We are going to help you achieve everything that you're wanting to do. And if you are on Clubhouse, um, at Luria Petrucci is me um, on Clubhouse today at 1 p.m. I'm gonna be talking about what I call the intimidation factor, AKA imposter syndrome. Uh, so if you've ever dealt with the feeling of, I can't, why, like, why would people want to hear from me? Like, who am I to speak about this stuff? Then I want you to join us on Clubhouse. If you're, if you have, if you're in there, it's, it is limited. Um, but, uh, we will be talking about that. I have uh, a session with Molly Mahoney and Stephanie Liu tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific talking about 18 secrets for live video. So we will be diving into so much good stuff here, Clubhouse, in the Uniquely You podcast. More podcast episodes are coming out soon. So you guys are covered. Hang out with me. Do, join me for these streams. Engage. So if you don't have that subscriber uh, or if you haven't subscribed and turned on the, the bell notification, do so now. Set your alarms and I will see you very soon. Put on your dancing shoes. Yes, we will be doing Lita in April live every day in April. Um, that is a challenge that we run to help you get over the fear of live video, but also help you integrate your personality. It's a little thing that uh, I don't really, well, I do now, but I didn't before talk about publicly. Sometimes I snuck it in. I snuck in the good stuff. Uh, but yeah, so definitely join me at, um, yeah. And then when, when, Le when April comes, we'll be, we'll be talking about that more. So more in March about Lita coming up. We'll have a place for you to register, all of that good stuff. Um, 
Well, that's good. That's good, Patrick. At least you did something. You took action. That is the whole point. You just need to take action. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Ready for the dance out? Put your dancing shoes on uh, and we are gonna dance this baby out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've had a wonderful last hour with me. I know I did with you. And welcome, welcome to all of our new viewers. I can't wait to see you again. So, all right, dancing shoes, ready.